This is the last video you'll need if you want to be a comp guard in NBA 2K23. Today I'll be giving y'all my official demigod ISO build, my badges, jump shot, dribble moves. I'm gonna be giving y'all a full dribble tutorial with every single move that I know. How to actually combo and piece the moves together. How to dribble without losing adrenaline. I'm gonna take y'all to shot creator school and I'm gonna give y'all just great tips on how to be a guard on this game, how to win games, and how to do your job. So make sure y'all drop a like, sub, turn on post notifications. It's all very much appreciated. And without wasting no more time, let's get straight into it. Man, let's get straight to it. So I'm gonna start off by giving y'all my official build. Everybody's saying small guards is canned, yada, yada, this, that, but I'm telling you they're not canned. This build is good for current and next gen. I will show y'all, um, I'm not showing y'all nothing because it's, it's deleted, but if y'all want my current gen build, I have a 6.7 version of the same exact build on current gen. You can make a 6.1 like the one I got right now, the one that I use on next gen and the game I play mainly, or you can make the 6.7 ISO version, which is a very good build too. This is a still ISO build, very good build, but it depends on what you want to do. If you're somebody who's small guards are past man and you you know what i'm saying you don't want to go to 6-1 then you could go ahead and just run it up to 6-7 just go to my other video the link will be in the comment section it's for me um taking over the 1v1 court or i did something on current gen set shot 25 on current gen yada yada yeah so yeah if y'all want that go ahead and watch that but <clears throat> for now let me just show y'all the booty build i'm running with right now it's not booty i'm just playing so we got point guard left hand okay 6'1, 160, 67, slight. This is how I got the attributes lined up. Now I'll tell you why each attribute is where it is. So drive and dunk, set at 80 with a 70 verse so you can get them quick drops. Everybody wants some quick drops. You're a sweat ball just like me, you need them. So speed 90, acceleration 90, stamina 92. I mean, you got speed, bro. It's self explanatory. Defense. I ain't cut myself out of everything, you know? So if you really wanted to be one of them type of guys, you could just drop this all the way. And then, you know what I'm saying? You could carry it up and either enhance your speed or you could keep your speed the same. Oh, why are they canning all my stats, bro? Hold up. They're canning all my stats right now. Y'all can make it, you know what I'm saying, something like this. You can max a three-pointer out, give it a 96 ball handling, and that's like, this is another version of it, you feel me? But like, the way I see it, you're not really gaining nothing by doing this. If you feel what I'm saying, you torching your defense, and then on top of that, you're not even getting Hall of Fame shooting, and you only getting one Hall of Fame tier three in playmaking, so like, you get what I'm saying? Let me reset the build and show y'all what I'm talking about now. Bro, what? Y'all can do that if y'all want, though. That's something for them people who might want a higher ball handling. Like, that's how you can actually make a build with quick drops, have a 93 three-pointer, and have a 96 ball handle. But it comes at the cost of torching your defense. So you got 75 perimeter, 74 steel. It's not too bad. Like, I get a bunch of steals, especially with 13 defense, and then my extra match points are on defense. Ball handle, 94, yada, yada, you get all go playmaking, you get every single dribble move that comes out. 94 is, you You got more than enough, man. Three balls at 92. If you drop it any bit, you'll get limitless range on silver, so that's why I got it. You get gold, everything in tier three. There's no way for you to stretch in and get Hall of Fame on this build, but... It's okay. The only way you can get Hall of Fame is if you up the mid range in the free throw, but like, you don't need that stuff. So, driving dunk. Y'all already understand this build and exactly why I made it. Every single category with my extra badges gets a tier three and a core badge. So, every single category, you'll be able to get a core badge, tier three badge. And you'll basically be able to rock whatever you want when it comes to this build. It gets all the good and necessity build uh, badges. Off ball pest hall of fame. So when you're sitting in that corner and people are dexing you, you got ankle braces, off ball pest, menace, you got pick dodger, you got all the good badges you would need to basically guard that. 
and that's the the role that this build plays so yeah man that's the build these the takes three point shot creator now we're gonna talk about badges jump shot and dribble moves all three of these don't really matter the badges matter but the jump shot i'm gonna teach you how to use a jump shot creator and i'm gonna get y'all my jump shots and then you can make whatever jump shot you want if you have a different build you can make a good jump shot and you know what to do and then dribble moves is the same way all the dribble moves that i'm gonna teach you in today's video you could do with any dribble moves in the game they don't require no type of certain sigs they just look nicer with certain sigs if that makes sense so you could find the right sigs and correlate these same exact moves with a 75 ball handle 85 ball handle even though you won't have the same sigs i'm just letting you know that because i know this year everybody's making tall builds and not everybody might have a small guard that could get every single dribble move like I can. So just don't be worried. I will be bringing updated videos with dribble moves for bigger guards, smaller guards, low ball handling, everything that y'all would need. So just stay tuned for all that stuff and y'all will get that. But there's no reason for me to get y'all 10 different sets of SIGs, three different jumpers and all this stuff in this video specifically. I'm just going to teach y'all how to be a comm guard and let y'all know what I got and teach y'all how to do what you need to do. So first things first, these are the SIGs that I'm running. They're very good SIGs. I mean, I don't really know what to say when it comes to talking about SIGs besides that they're good. You feel me? You see the way I'm moving. If you want to use them, you could copy them. You'll see all the drill moves that I teach you today also. Um, for spin jumper and hop jumper, you're gonna need Allen Iverson on both of them and then dribble pull up. You can use either Trey Young or Steph Curry. I personally use Steph Curry this year because I just like it. But if y'all wanna use Trey Young, it's personal preference. But Allen Iverson, this is gonna be used for the shot creator school today. So make sure y'all have these on and that'll wrap it up for the dribble moves. Now let's get over to the badges. Now when it comes to the badges, this is what I'm rocking on finishing. I didn't get the rest of my finishing badges, so I can't get limitless takeoff yet, but I will be able to get limitless takeoff when I max out my finishing. So I'll have limitless takeoff silver. I'll probably have fearless finisher, acrobat, masher, giant slayer, and dream shake or something, honestly, because these tier one badges are like, you know, like, there's a lot of these badges you don't need. Like really you just need limitless takeoff, but then the Giant Slayer, Masher, and a couple other of these badges come in handy sometimes. So for shooting badges, I've been working on my core badge. So let me take this off real quick. The way I'm gonna rock my shooting badges when they're maxed out is I'm gonna have guard up silver like you see on the screen, amped, hall of fame, green machine, bronze, agent three, silver, and no, Agent 3s will be on gold because I'm working on coring that gold as y'all could have just seen. And then I'll have blinders on silver. So, I mean, yeah, that's really self-explanatory. Those are the best badges this year. Um, guard up, if somebody doesn't have their hands up and they're just standing in front of you, it'll count as open shot and it will count as no contest. Amped helps you shoot when your energy is lost. That's why I got this on Hall of Fame because energy being lost is something that is gonna happen to you this year you know what i'm saying so you might as well have amped on green machine gray badge limitless range i mean these badges sh should really speak for themselves they're all really good badges now for playmaking i am gonna switch these no i'm not i'm lying i'm lying i'm not switching them so ankle breaker silver quick first step gold unpluckable gold bailout bronze Clamp Breaker Silver, Handles for Days Gold, and Killer Combo Silver. This is what I've been working uh, working with. Seems to work really good for me. I haven't seen too much of a problem besides the fact that the bailout is the way it is. So if y'all want, you could take off all that and just a uh, bailout. But as y'all can see, I don't have the pack as, pa pass accuracy yet. So... Once I get my pass accuracy upgraded with one of my next upgrades, I'll probably switch bail out to silver, but that's the only thing that I would change. For defense, like I told y'all, the defensive build, uh, badges on this build are good, man. I got off ball pest on Hall of Fame, ankle braces silver, menace silver, pick dodger on bronze. Now I could switch this around to get glove, 
but I don't really know if I want to. So I might do that later, I don't know. Um, other than that, those are the badges that I'm rocking with. Now I'm gonna teach y'all how to break the jump shot creator and I'm gonna give y'all my jump shot. Now the jump shot creator, here's my jump shot. The official jump shot I'm using right now is all A's, A+, plus, A+, plus, A+, plus, A-, minus. Steph Curry, bro, what? All right, we're back, I apologize. Steph Curry, Oscar Robertson, and Matt Thomas. I don't even know who Oscar Robertson or Matt Thomas is. Not ego in them, but I don't even know who they are, bro. But they're chicken this year, so put them on. 80-20. Y'all see the jump shot. Y'all see the stats. Y'all see the way I shoot with it. It's chicken. Simple as that. If y'all want to make a good jump shot, make sure you try and make a jump shot with all around A's. Timing impact matters. I watch a lot of YouTube videos. People get A release height, A release speed, and A immunity, and they'll just think that the impact doesn't matter. Well, let me tell you what the impact is. The impact is when you shoot a shot, it could be a slightly late, but you see people will shoot a slightly late and it'll still be green. If you want that to happen without you having takeover, having a high timing impact will make it happen more often. So having all these stats, at at least the A are going to be the best for you. If you want some good bases, Kyle Kuzma, Jimmy Butler, um, LaMelo Ball, Steph Curry. Those are the ones off the top of my head that I know are good. I don't know about the rest, but you should be able to make a jump shot. If it's not all around A's, just make sure you consider the overall value, the overall, you know, jump shot attributes as of to one or two of them you don't want to just go with speed and height and not care about anything else because you think you're just going to be able to time it green you will be able to but like i said timing impact will help make things easier so look we got a little fan by me send me a friend request just know i love you bro i'm about to add you back right now unless you're inside center i probably won't add you back but yeah, he's inside. You're not getting added back, but I do love you and appreciate you. And now we're going to get into the dribble tutorial and everything else. I apologize for taking up so much time with the little stuff that I did take up time with. I just wanted to break down badges and everything that really, you know what I'm saying, that y'all should know. One more thing. Let me go back to playmaking badges because I didn't break them down for real. When it comes to playmaking badges, Clan Breaker is an amazing badge. Like, it is an amazing badge. Handles for days, killer combos, these are all really good badges. Quick first step, unpluckable. Hyperdrive is good if you're a tall build. If you're like 6'4 and up, throw on hyperdrive. If you're not, then you don't need it. Because I'm 6'1, I have high speed with ball and everything already. I don't need this at all. But everything else, killer combo speeds up the combinations together. So if you're not somebody who actually combos, you don't even need this either. I'm going to let y'all know that. It does give you tight handle stuns and stuff like that, but that's more for people who momentum. Momentum misdirection, momentum tween, momentum, you know what I'm saying? Do the combos, so yeah. That's the last thing, now let's get into this dribble tutorial and the rest of the stuff. All right, y'all, I'm not going with the Gatorade courts. I wanna record my dribble tutorial here, so let's hope this random doesn't end up getting teammates, and let's hope people don't end up messing with me and we can get this dribble tutorial on the road. So the first thing I'm going to teach you is all the new double crosses in 2K23. So the double cross is this. Hold on, I'm a little delayed. One sec. That's a double cross right there. All right. So to do the double cross, what you're going to want to do is hold R2 and do a crab move first. To do a crab move, you flick your right stick diagonally up to the opposite way the ball is in. So if the ball is in your right hand, diagonally up to the left, crab move. If the ball is in your left hand, diagonally up to the right, crab, crab move. Now basically, you're going to want to quickly do a crab to the right and then to the left. As y'all can see, I just did a double crab and boom, it gave me, that's one of the um, new double combinations, your moves, whatever Mike Wayne was talking about, all right? Now, the next one you could do is the same thing. So you can do one crab move, and then instead of doing the same crab move back like I just told y'all to do, you're going to flick your right stick 
down like this. So you see my right stick? You're going to flick it down like this to either the left or the right, depending on what hand the ball is in. It's just going to be diagonally down to the opposite way the ball is in. So once you do that, you'll get a between the legs ante like this. Hold on, my bad. You'll get a between the legs animation like that. That's another one you could do. And then there's one more you could do. You could do the crab. And then instead of flicking your right stick diagonally down or diagonally up, you're just going to flick it straight up. So crab and then flick it straight up. And then that'll give you like a charge forward kind of, and you can kind of speed boost to the paint, speed boost out to the three, do whatever you want out of that. You feel me? So those are the new crosses in 2K23, the new stuff that they added. Now I'm about to teach y'all how to momentum and momentum span. This is the easiest thing in the game. There's a lot of people who struggle with it. Hold on, let me get my adrenaline back. There's a lot of people who struggle with doing the momentum spam, and that's because I feel like a lot of people teach it wrong or they're just doing it the hard way because there's two ways to do it. This is the easy way to do the momentum. Flick your right stick straight up. Right stick straight up. And then you're going to move your left stick diagonally up to the opposite way the ball is in. So if your ball is in your right hand, diagonally up to the left. Ball is in your left hand, diagonally up to the right. That's all you got to do. And then you can momentum spam. It's super easy. Like, Oh, that's on me. See, that's me. I messed that up. But y'all can see, man, that's how you momentum spam. I'm not really the best with the full court running down momentum spam right now, but that's how you momentum spam in 2K23. My shoe went off because this little shoot around is delayed. Now I'm going to teach you the forward and behind the back misdirection. Let me shoot so I get my adrenaline. Now either way you do it, you're going to hold R2 and stand still. You're going to flick your right stick diagonally up to the opposite way the ball is in. So if the ball is in your right hand, you're going to... You're going to flick your right stick diagonally up to the left like this. Ball is in your left hand diagonally up to the right like that. And then your left stick is just going to be flicked to the same side the ball is in. So if the ball is in your right hand, straight to the right. Ball is in your left hand, straight to the left. That's all you're going to do. And then from there, you should get the animation to do the misdirection. Now to do the behind the back version of the misdirection, instead of flicking your right stick diagonally up or to, you know what I'm saying, diagonally up to the left or the right, you're going to flick it diagonally down to the left or the right. So it's the same exact thing, but down instead of up. Hold on. My fault, y'all. I'm a little rusty. I literally just woke up, but y'all see it. No, people's hopping on. Why are you doing this? All right, that's the misdirection. Let me go find another court. But that's how you do the misdirection. It's just simply up to the left, up to the right, down to the left, down to the right. The reason I'm not getting the animation every time is because I'm just really tired and I'm probably not flicking it the exact way that I'm telling you because I'm literally tired and I'm a little faded. So, yeah. Now I'm about to teach y'all how to do the snatch. Now, to do a snatch, it's super easy. You're just going to want to hold R2, flick your right stick straight up, and then your left stick is going to go a tiny bit down to opposite way the ball is in. So if the ball is in your left hand, it's going to go a little bit down to the right like this. Ball is in your right hand, it's going to go a little bit down to the left like this. Once you do that, you just get the snatch. So that's how you do the snatch. All right, to do the tween, I'm probably going to explain this terribly. I'm going to be honest with y'all because it is really complicated and a hard move to do. So if you can't do it, just skip. If it sounds bad, just skip this part because I'm honestly just probably not the best at explaining this certain move. But to do the tween, you're going to want to do, it's basically three actions to do the tween. You're going to flick your right stick in like this direction like this you see you see my right stick you're gonna flick your if the ball is in your left hand you're flicking your right stick like this ball is in your right hand you're flicking it like this and then after you flick your stick you're moving your left stick diagonally up so if the ball is in your left hand you're gonna basically move your right stick like this and then your left stick like this and then as soon as you move your left stick you're gonna hit turbo r2 so that's what I mean, three actions. So I don't know if that's the best to, 
best way to explain it. Hold on. But that's the tween right there. Hold on. That's the tween. And then you could chain that into your combos. Once you get it down and you could tween spam and do whatever you want with it. As you can see, I'm obviously not the best at doing the move itself. I have a bootleg tween that I'll be doing, but that's how you do the tween. I hope it wasn't too bad at explaining it. I'm not going to do 10 minutes on the tween since I'm not the best at doing it, but I can still do it as y'all can see. So that's how you do the tween. Now I'm going to teach y'all how to do the hezzy hop. To do the hezzy hop, you're going to flick your right stick to the same direction the ball is in. So if the ball is in your right hand, straight to the right. Ball is in your left hand, straight to the left. And then your left stick is going to go to the opposite way. So if the ball is in your right hand, straight to the left. If the ball is in your left hand, straight to the right. Hold on. Super easy move to do. It's really nice when you chain it. Like, y'all see that right there. That bops everybody in the park. If I could just time my jumper. Now I'm going to teach you that behind the back into the basic one that y'all just seen with that combo that I just did. If y'all see, like, little, like, glitches, it's just because my internet's terrible and the PS5 does that for me for some reason. If anybody in the comment section knows how to stop that, then let me know, but I don't know how to stop that. So, um, basically, to do the behind the back, you're going to run up the court and you're going to flick your right stick just down to the opposite way the ball is in. So if the ball is in your left hand, down to the right like this. If the ball is in your right hand, down to the left like this. Let me show y'all. That's the behind the back. Once you do the behind the back, you could do the half spin. Let me show y'all the half spin. Waste no adrenaline doing either of these moves. So to do the half spin, if the ball is in your right hand, you're moving your right stick like this. Ball is in your left hand, you're moving your right stick like this. So that's how you do the basic one into the half spin. Show y'all it one more time. Hold on. It's my bad. I'll show y'all it one more time before we get on to the next move. And then you could tap L2 at the end to get a quick stop. Or this game, what I've noticed, as soon as you like automatically stop after doing the basic one, it's actually super fast. Let me see if I could do it one more time to show y'all an example of what I mean. All right, no, nah. I don't have a good example, but if you're in a park game and that happens to you, you're just doing a basic one and you do that, you'll know exactly what I mean. Now I'm gonna teach y'all another complicated move, but it is super easy, the nutmeg. It is different to do the nutmeg than last year. To do the nutmeg, you're basically gonna do three things with your right stick. You're gonna run up the court, you don't have to hold turbo. You can if you want to, it doesn't matter. And you're gonna flick your right stick once to the right like this. You're gonna wait a little second for the animation to like kind of play. And then after that, you're gonna flick it down like this to like if you're gonna be doing a behind the back kind of. And then straight up. And from there, you'll get the nutmeg animation. Let me show y'all. As y'all can see, that's how you do the nutmeg. I hope I explained that good. It is easy to do, kind of. You just got to let that first, that animation right there, you have to let that play for a tiny second. Last year, you could just hit it super fast and spam it really quick. But this year, you have to hit that right stick, wait a tiny, tiny second, and then do the other two flicks. So that's how you do nutmeg. Now I'm going to teach y'all how to roll in half spin. Not a half spin. I mean, I'm going to start off with the roll. So the roll, what you're going to do is just hold your left stick straight up, like either to the left or to the right, to either the left or the right. Now I'm going to show you exactly like how I do it. I don't know if this is really good. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> But, all right, one sec, I messed that one up, but as y'all can see, I just held it up to the right. If the ball is in your left hand, like it just was for me, hold it up to the right. If the ball is in your right hand, hold it up to the left. That's how you do the roll. For me, left hand is this, y'all. Y'all got to remember, when you're going backwards, it might look like the right, right hand because you're running backwards. 
but it's really the left hand. Logically thinking, it's the left hand. So I just want y'all to know that. Now I'm going to teach y'all the half spin. Now to do the half spin, you're just basically doing a half spin with your right stick. So you're either going to move it like this, as you see on the screen, or you're going to move it in the other direction like this, from the right to the left, or from the left to the right, nine to six. So doing that, see the nine to six, just watch the screen. I'm going to do it both ways so you know which way to flick it each time, all right? Hold up. I messed that one up. I ain't going to lie. I probably did that one wrong. I'm not good at doing it to that side. I'm actually terrible at doing it to that side. So just take what I said into account. 9 to 6, 6 to 9. That's all you have to do. I'm only good at doing it to one side because that's just how I am. Like most of the moves I do, I can only do them to one side, which is really weird. I'm not going to tell y'all which side so y'all can clamp me, but yeah. Yes, my son, you've made it to the end of this dribble tutorial almost, man. Like, I've taught you so many moves, and I'm going to teach you how to combo them, but there's one more left, the step back. Now, this is the step back. I'm thinking about, honestly, like, getting rid of it. You don't have to hold R2. It really doesn't waste no adrenaline. All you have to do is just flick your right stick down. That's literally all you have to do to do the step back. I'm thinking about getting rid of it because I haven't really seen it break too many ankles and I'm here to break ankles, but it is a very good move to get you open to shoot. So that's why I've kept it on. It's because it gets me open a lot. Now I'm going to teach y'all how to actually combo these together and use them, like just actually use them. You can use them any way you want to. All these moves go together. That's the basic morality of it. The, I don't know what morality means. Like, <laughs> I got to Google that. <laughs> but listen, y'all. So the nutmeg, you could do the nutmeg into the basic one. Into the roll. Into the behind the back. Into the basic one. Into the roll. Into the half spin. Like, you could do all of that together. I'm going to show y'all an example. I messed up that last part, but as y'all can see, most of these moves just chain into each other. I'm losing stamina, so it's getting hard for me to dribble, but y'all see the basics of it. It just always goes together. You do the momentum, and you can momentum, then tween, then crab. That's usually what I do. I'll do a momentum, tween, crab. And then misdirection, all that stuff, it all connects together. You just got to learn how to connect it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could just chain everything together and just make whatever type of out of the blue, you know, combos that you want to make. Like I showed y'all earlier, this combo right here. Hold up. Normally people, you know what I'm saying? Fall to that on a daily basis. So comboing it is just basically taking everything that I taught you and piecing it together. You could throw the tween in with anything that you want to. You could throw the behind the back in with anything that you want to. You could do basically anything you want with these dribble moves. Every single one goes together. Literally every single one. There's not one move in this whole dribble tutorial that I taught you that you can't put in with another move, another two, three moves. You could put them all together. The double crosses... All that stuff, all the standstill moves I taught you, you could just do at one time like you see me doing, bro. You could combo standstill, and then out of the standstill, you could do the behind the backs into everything. Like, this all goes together. So that's how you piece it together. I know this might not have been like an actual, let me show you me doing the tween, and then me doing the momentum, and show y'all like, you know what I'm saying, that it works together. Like, as y'all can see, bro, all this stuff, it just goes together. I don't know what else to tell you about it. Just be unique with it and make whatever extraordinary combos you want with the moves that I've taught you. Now, let's get into adrenaline talk, man. Everybody was worried about adrenaline this year, but I'm just going to simply break down the best non-adrenaline combos. The best way to move around the court without losing adrenaline is to actually do those moves I taught you. 
the basic one into the behind the back the roll the half spin the nutmeg none of that waste any type of adrenaline as y'all can see i could combo for days move around the court i could do whatever and i'm not losing no type of adrenaline i'm always popping back for threes it literally doesn't waste no type of adrenaline at the same time the standstill moves even the ones that require r2 that little crossover gets you around the court doesn't require any adrenaline None of these moves require adrenaline. As y'all can see, only time you waste adrenaline is speed boosting out of a move. And this speed boost, I'm going to teach y'all it real quick. Flick your right stick to the opposite way the ball is in. So if the ball is in your left hand, to the right, up to the right, ball is in your left hand, I mean right hand, up to the left like that. As y'all can see on the screen, you see the animation you're going to get if you have my cigs. After that, you wait a second take off and then hold r2 it's kind of like 2k21 so if you look we got somebody watching this bro this is my rented court he must know who i am type shit if you know who i am bro i love you but listen after you flick it you could just take off and you could basically do like the 2k21 or you could do the 2k22 speed boost whatever one that you want to do so to do the um fancy shot creator moves that i do that y'all be seeing you're going to want to hold R2, double tap square, and just shoot for the first one. You could do it with and without R2, but like since I'm delayed inside of this Gatorade facility, R2 works better. But you could do it without R2 for sure. Like as y'all can see, without R2, you can still do it completely without R2. And then the next one that I'm going to show y'all is just holding down your right stick. So hold down your right stick, shoot it. So it's shooting with the right stick, so you have to release it with the right stick. You don't really like, you could switch to square, I think, and maybe try to. No, you can't even switch to square. You gotta shoot it with the right stick, and that's really it. Like, it just creates a bunch of space. You can use it however you would like to. It's two really good shot creator moves. Fading is really big this year, so like, Steph Curry fade. Y'all gonna be wanting to bust them fades down, you feel me? Bust that fade down like you just see me do it. That's really it for shot creator schools. Two really good shot creator moves. I know those aren't really moves that I have to teach y'all, but at the same time, those are moves that y'all should add to your bag so then you could fool people with them and get some nice clips. All right, y'all. Now I'm about to give you the guard tips. This is going to be the last part of the video. The first part of guard tips is learning your combos and how to execute your combos. Because this year, being a guard, you can't just left, right, Speed boost, speed boost, speed boost. Do all that stuff you could do last year. You know what I'm saying? Everybody made guard look look very easy last year. This year it takes IQ. Like if you look at that play right there, even though I missed time that three, it only took me maybe an inch. Not even, bro. It took me a tiny, tiny bit off of my little Gatorade bar. Still had three adrenalines, everything. And it was a quick, easy, if I would have green that, it would have been easy bucket under five seconds. Like, that's what I mean. It was a perfectly executed dribble scheme. You have to execute everything nicely and think about the way that you're going to do things. When you're doing your combos, you got to be efficient with them. Because if you're playing a good lock on this game, I'm telling you, bro, the locks on this game, they're insane, man. I was playing against the lock the other day, bro. Mobile one. He was getting rips like crazy. We still won. But it was just crazy. He wasn't the best lock. But I already know, once you go up against some 99 overall lockdown, since overall don't drop this year, them locks ain't finna be 95 overalls. You know what I'm saying? Low overalls because the guard don't pass. You're gonna be playing against 99 locks, 99 steel, Hall of Fame glove, people who are actually gonna be getting rips this year. So if you do a... um your move and it's just mistimed you do it right into them it's getting ripped i'm telling you that right now so when it comes to dribbling a lot of people are going to be scared to run that iso on the comp stage let's put it like that me i'm never going to be scared i'll be running a pick and pop iso the whole entire year i'll never run with an inside big but um <clears throat> and bro i feel like i'm about to throw up but listen y'all what was i about to say two hours later just learn your combos be efficient because when you mess your combos up 
it's, it's not going to work good for you. You know what I'm saying? Every time you mess up a combo in front of a good lock, it's not going to look good. Against randoms, you can mess up, do whatever you want, have fun, because most of the people on this game are actually terrible. But, yeah, just learn your combos. Now, the next thing I'm going to tell you is play IQ team basketball. You're going to see at the end of this game, I have, I don't know how many assists. You're going to want to play and actually pass the ball and be a team player. You don't want to just sit there and try scoring all 21 the whole entire game. Because that's not going to get you rep, first of all. And on top of that, it's just not going to get you wins. Somebody that's playing as a team is going to beat you over somebody that's not. Y'all see me. I'm playing with three people who could equally go crazy. When I'm in my bag, I'm going crazy. When Smith's in his bag, he's getting three, four, five steals a game. Now, Dime, I ain't going to lie. He be showing some lace because he from the West Anthia. But he be, he be chicken sometimes. Everybody, when we get a three that's in our bags, it's almost impossible to beat us. We don't have our, like, set third yet. So if anybody in the comment section wants to be our third, let me know. But you have to play team ball, man. If you're not sitting there passing, you're not doing anything, then it's not going to go good for you. Now, next couple things I want to let y'all know. Learn your icons. Watch the corners every single play. Like, watch corners. Watch the drops. You have to be patient. Even if there's, like, five, eight seconds left on the clock, you driving in, you don't want to pass out. Sometimes everybody will crash under the basket when there's not much time left, and you might just have to throw the ball out and hope that they can bang it real quick. Pause. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just how it is. You have to sit there and think. And be patient. Sometimes a three won't come off to the last second. Two might not be open for the first time. You might have to take a two. You just got to take what's there and be smart. And next thing, this is important. Don't waste three adrenalines on one, one actual scoring attempt. So let's say you coming down the court and you trying to get a three off to the right corner. Don't waste three adrenalines trying to get that open three in the right corner. Use one. That might sound impossible. Oh, how am I going to work with one? I already told y'all a bunch of combos, man. All you got to do is try and get open. And if that doesn't work, you will have more adrenaline left. An easy thing that can ruin a play is just you losing adrenaline. Because as soon as you lose adrenaline, they reach, they're getting a steal. You move like a snail. Like, it's over. So, that's the next thing. The last two things that I'm going to tell y'all. Learn how to time your jump shot because... Fades, them hop jumpers I showed you, regular just fades off of screens, regular standstills, the contested jumpers, how it has different timings, there's different timings for all the jump shots. Being an elite shooter is probably one of the hardest things to do this year. It is easy to shoot when you know your jump shot. But all these randoms that was good at shooting last year are not shooting the same exact way. You know what I'm saying? Like... It's easy once you get your badges, and if you know how to shoot, it's easy. But if you're not green, and it's not going in. So most of the time, if you're playing somebody that's not good at shooting, you could just leave them open, and they won't green seven out of seven shots and score the whole 21. It's just not going to happen unless you're playing somebody that can actually time your jumper and is good. And if they're taking the same exact shots with the same timing and playing smart, then you know what I'm saying? Anybody could time it. So learn your jump shot. Learn all the different timings so then you can do different things to get open. And the last thing that I'm going to tell y'all is to be versatile on both offense and defense. Don't be a liability on defense, man. So many people making bills with literally 25 defensive stats. Like, mine only has a 75 perimeter D, 75 steal. But I have 15 defensive badges. It's enough for me to put in work. It's more than I had last year. Not put in work last year even though I had a higher steal. But it's all good, man. You just got to, you know what I'm saying? You got to try and play good on the defense. Even if you're sitting in the corner, watch the back doors. I just got cooked right there talking about defense. But, hey, listen. Watch the back doors. Watch everything. Just be be smart, man. Be a good teammate on defense and offense. Because if your offense is good and your defense is bad, I'm telling you right now there's no point in anybody picking you up. Because they going to want to. They're going to be stressed out on defense trying to carry you. 
and then they're not going to be doing nothing on all. Like, just be a team player and be equally as good on offense and defense. As y'all can see, I dragged this video out a little bit too long. So, um, hope y'all enjoyed it, bro. I'm not going to talk down y'all neck no more. I love y'all boys. Your boy Harness out, man.